I'd like to I'd like to begin this class by sharing something from what's called the Dharma Eye. This is a this is really an excellent resource for us. It has um, articles from Japanese Zen priests in it, and in particular, there's one Zen priest that I really enjoy reading, and I've I've met him on a number of occasions uh, to hear him talk and, and to talk about zazen and meditation practice. And I just think he's fantastic. Uh, his name is Fujita Isho. And he's he's in these, this I just picked off the, this is right off the internet. It's If you go to the sotozen.net.or, uh, sotozen et cetera, you can find this particular journal, Soto Zen Journal, and it's it's really top notch. It's really good writing. You also have people like Shohaku Okamura in it. Um, Carl Biefeld is a professor, and he's been translating, uh, slowly translating various texts of Dogen. And then this is the one I want to check out: my footnotes on Zazen. We'll go to we'll go there. Yes. Make that a little bit bigger here. So he's been, he, the way he writes, it's kind of like a flash of thought. It's kind of in the middle. It doesn't necessarily have a beginning and an end, but you can see here that, um, well, here's Fujiti show, and it says they're continued from the previous section. And in this, uh, this is called Just Breathe Naturally Through Your Nose. So that's a, that's a quote from the instructions for how to do zazen, where it talks about breathing naturally. And Fujita Isho here um, goes really deeply into what does that actually mean for us? Because it's one thing to say it, just breathe naturally through your nose, you're like, okay, but what can we learn from breathing naturally? What things, the, what things can aid us in simply appreciating breathing naturally through our nose so that's the question like what it's one thing to simply breathe through our nose but it's another thing to consider what what do we need to know that can help us to deeply appreciate our breath our in-breath and out-breath and so this article goes into that and i want to share a little bit about what he says he says, unlike the movement of the heart and the secretion of saliva that is governed by the autonomic nervous system, the breath is controlled by somatic nerves that are voluntary nerves. In short, this means that to some extent, the breath can be controlled by the will. Of course, the movement of the breath is a voluntary movement, and at the same time, it is automatically governed by the brain stem, respiratory center. Consequently, even while we are sleeping, the involuntary respiratory movements are maintained so we can sleep without any concerns about breathing. In this way, the respiratory movements are both voluntary and involuntary. It's kind of interesting just to think about there. But listen to this next part. He talks about um, the deceased Dr. Shigeo Miki, a scholar of comparative anatomy. He says, quote, when we look back at the eternal history of vertebrate animals, we can see several structural revolutions from the Paleozoic to the Mesozoic period. There is one revolution which we must say is truly bewildering, and that is the change which took place during the time that animals climbed from water to land. That is, the place of breathing moved from the gills to the lungs. In other words, move to the respiratory muscles themselves. We must look back at the great revolution that took place here, namely when the gills collapsed and the lungs formed. The gill muscles broke apart and instead the chest muscle, which until that time had, had nothing to do with breathing, emerged as the respiratory muscles that newly moved the lungs. So that's the, that's the quotation I want to share. And I just think, it, you know, to, to think about our breath in terms of both uh, voluntary, it's both voluntary and involuntary, but also in terms of the evolutionary history of breathing. And this isn't so far off from 
what human beings experience in their lifetime. If you consider free birth, all of us were not using our lungs the way we are right now. And so there is embedded in the human lifespan, this memory of movement from using gills to, I mean, not, that, not to say that, that uh, fetuses have gills, but there is this movement of from gills to lungs. So if we take into account the evolution of vertebrate animals, this is just fascinating to consider that our breath is the result of this evolution, that each breath we take is a result of an incredible revolution in the way that life has evolved on this planet. So to take a breath, to, to breathe naturally, Coming back to that question, what does it mean? How can we breathe naturally? And this is some information about evolution that can aid us in really deeply, more deeply appreciating the gift of breath. So let's take a few moments here to just, you know, consider that you know, as we're as we're sitting, just consider the in breath, the ex, the exhale, the inhale and the incredible transformation or revolution that had to take place in at a certain point in earth's history for us to be breathing with lungs So in this class, uh, we will we'll consider just kind of bringing, drawing more awareness internally to notice the changes that are going on within our body a little bit more, uh, in, in a little bit more detail with a little bit more subtlety than perhaps a faster moving class, which is also, can also be very, very good for us. But I wanna purposely Turn our attention inwards a little bit more subtly so that we can, in a sense, catch up with our bodies. Our minds sometimes tend to like, go full speed ahead. And when we experience changes to weather patterns, um, our mind is still in the old weather pattern that was back there. But like recently with the shifting of the weather and becoming um, colder, quicker. We, we need to catch up to our body. Our body is aware of the changes more deeply than our mind is. And so let's like bring our attention into our body to feel what's going on there. Not, you know, not with our hands, but with our sensations, with our, our interoceptive ability, that ability to proceed inwardly. And let's do that by beginning with sun salutation. So make your way to uh, to the top of your, your yoga mat. Find your feet. Find your feet. If you need blocks, this would be a good time to good time to place them. For sun salutation, having them right next to your feet on either side of your feet. And adjusting the height. Be good. Blocks, bricks, 
books, whatever, whatever you have at, at hand. And let's reach the arms up overhead, lengthen the body up, interlacing the hands, interlacing the fingers, stretching the body upwards, squeezing the elbows together. Just breathing here, noticing the body. And then releasing the hands and bring them back down to your sides, folding forward from the hips. Just sliding your hands down, maybe about shin to the shin, lengthening out your back. I want to emphasize here how important it is to listen to your body, your body as your teacher. I'm just kind of giving some instructions based on what I'm noticing in my body. And I really encourage you to look inwards at your own body to see how it feels and to adjust things accordingly. And then uh, feel free to bring your hands down to the, to the mat or to the blocks if you have them and you want to use them. And just stepping your both feet back for downward dog. In downward dog, take some time to just kind of release muscles in the back of your neck. Maybe walk your feet in place and open up your, your armpits, drawing your, your armpits towards the mat. And then shifting forward to plank, shifting your your body forward to plank, plank so that you're really engaging your core muscles. I'm on the tips of my toes here, engaging my core muscles, squeezing your, your thighs, your glutes, your abdomen, engaging your shoulders, arms, and then lowering, lowering down, kind of slowly lowering down your whole body. Uncurling your toes, and then perhaps lifting up for an upper dog or a cobra and bringing your elbows close to your sides. You could have your hands on blocks or off them. And then returning to downward dog when you're ready. And just breathing here in downward dog. Let's just stay in downward dog for Maybe about 30 more seconds. Take, a, take this opportunity to really think about what I mentioned before about the breath. Remember that you can partially control your breathing. When you can control your breathing, you can control your mind, say the, the sages, the ancient teachers. Okay, let's walk the feet forward to the hands. And the hands to the shin, lifting the head partial. And then all the way up to standing, continuing to lift the arms straight up over the head, interlacing the fingers, reaching up towards the ceiling, straightening the elbows a little bit. Maybe the hands, the arms come behind the ears, maybe, as you reach up. And then bringing the hands back down to the sides. Notice how your body's feeling after having done that. Okay, let's try that again. That's number two. Just playing, reaching the arms up over it, interlacing the hands, reaching up. 
Continuing to reach up, pressing the elbows together. And then releasing the hands back down to the sides, folding from the hips, hands coming to the shins. And draw the navel in and up into the rib cage. Feel free to bend your knees if you want to. And then hands down to your mat, or if you have blocks, you bring them down there, stepping both feet back together. Let's pause in downward dog for about 30 seconds. Consider internally rotating your thighs. And know that you can partially control the movement of your breathing. And shifting the weight forward for plank. Engage your core here. Very important. Engage our core. Coming up onto the tips of the toes. Let's just hold that for about another 20 seconds in plank holding, squeezing the legs, the glutes, the center of the body. Squeeze, hold, shoulders strong, arms strong. Breathe, check out the flow of your breath. Squeezing the elbows together, lower down. Okay, uncurl the toes, elbows close to the body as you lift up the head, neck and shoulders. Squeeze the glutes, very important to squeeze your buttocks. And then return to downward dog. Engage your core here as you return to downward dog. The shoulders coming down, thighs rolling in, tailbone reaching back as though somebody were pushing on your low back, moving it towards your towards the back wall. And stepping the feet forward to the hands. Lifting the head, hands to the shins, lengthening out the back. And let's come back to standing, continuing to lift the arms up overhead, interlacing the fingers and reaching straight up. Okay, and then releasing the hands back to the sides. Okay, this next sun salutation will be a little bit different. We'll add in some hip openers. And we'll start out with the palms together in front of the heart. Reaching the arms forward and up with a tiny back bend just beneath the shoulder blades. Squeeze the tops of the legs, the buttocks together as you bend back a little bit. And then fold forward from the hips. Stepping the left foot back, hands planted on the ground or a block. Stepping the left foot back. Let's enjoy this, this uh, lunge. Nice hip opener here. You could rock a little bit to open the hips up a little. And then stepping the right foot back. And feel free to shake out the head a little bit. Shifting the body forward for plank. Engage the core. It's almost like you're lifting your core up a little bit. Shoulders over the, over the wrists. Coming onto the toes, the tips of the toes. Engage your core, engage your glutes, engage your thighs. Making the body tight like a board. 
and then lowering down. Lifting the head up, let's go back to down dog. Okay, and then stepping the left foot forward, lower the right knee. Let's enjoy this nice lunge. Great hip opener, good for, good for preparation for Zazen. And then stepping the right foot forward. Lift the head halfway, hands to the shins, reach out the back. Lengthen out the back. Lifting the head all the way up, arms overhead. Locking the thumbs, little back bend, engage your core, your glutes. And palms together in front of the heart. Okay, wonderful. See how your body's feeling here. Okay, um, let's just do a couple of back bends and we'll the, then focus on some core work. So for the back bends, feel free to come down onto your front side. Bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, elbows close to the body. Feet together. When you're ready, let's engage the back muscles and lift the whole back up, peeling it up from the chin through the ribs onto the abdomen, just, be just beneath the rib cage. And feel your abd abdominal muscles pressing into the floor as you breathe in. Remember to appreciate this gift of breath on land. Breathe, breathe. This is Cobra. This helps to end any kind of depression, taking that ox fresh oxygen into our lungs, breathing a little deeper. Helps to correct posture. We're engaging our back muscles here. Just holding maybe another 10 seconds if you want. Squeeze the glutes together. Okay, when you're ready, let's lower the head down. Turn it to one side and rest. Rest your hands, rest your arms. Okay, this one, next one is Cobra with a transition to bow pose. And um, you could stay in Cobra if you want to, or if you'd like to try bow, you're welcome to do that. Let's start in Cobra, hands underneath the shoulders, just as before, elbows close to the body, feet touching, lifting the head, peeling the head off the body, sorry, peeling the, <laughs> peeling the, the front side of the body off of the mat to come onto the abdomen. The edge of your ribs, your rib cage might be touching the ground. Shoulders coming down the back, lightly pressing the hands into the mat. Now you could stay here or bend your knees. So let your, your feet kind of, your heels come in towards your buttocks. And then reach back behind you with your hands, taking hold of your feet if they reach. And then pushing your feet into your hands to lift up your legs and head and shoulders. Really making sure to focus here on the knees lifting up, lifting the knees up and then the head, shoulders. 
keeping the abdomen grounded into the floor. You could grab different parts of your, you know, you can, you can hold between your ankles and your knees if you wanted to, like sliding your hands down, down towards your knees is another way to do this pose. And pushing, continue to push the, the feet into the hands for a nice back bend, nice opening. Breathe. When you're ready, go ahead and release slowly with control. Turning the head to the opposite side and rest. All right, great. Let's um, let's transition to child's pose to stretch the muscles in the low back that we've just been tightening and and uh, contracting. Let's stretch them out just a little bit in child's pose, widening the knees, widening the space between the knees, maybe wiggling a, a little here side to side. Forehead comes down to the mat. Okay, make our way onto, uh, have a seat and then let's just swing the feet forward. We're gonna, we're gonna shift to some core work here. So let's start out with boat, leaning back a little bit. Just with your feet on the floor. We'll just start out with the feet on the floor and lean back, They're your hands next to your, next to your legs. You could hold on to your legs if you want to and hold here. Let's hold here for about 20 seconds. If you need to rest sooner, that's, please by all means do so. Really encourage you to listen to your body, but let's, let's, let's see if we can really feel the core here. Okay, let's lower down all the way, reaching the arms overhead to stretch the core out. Okay, and then peeling your back off the mat, come back to seated, engage your core again. This time you have the option to keep your feet on the floor or to lift your feet off of the floor. Legs could be bent or straight, knees could be bent or straight and hold. About 15 more seconds if you if you want. Maybe straightening the knees. Three, two, one. Lower the legs first, then the back. Arms overhead, stretch it out. All right, let's peel the back off the mat, back to seated. This time, you have the choice, again, to leave your feet on the ground, lift them off. And the third choice is to interlace your hands behind your head as you lean back. So you could keep your feet on the floor, or if you want, lift them up. See if you can straighten your back, leaning back a little bit. And three, two, one, lower the legs, lower the back, arms over the head, stretch it out. All right, let's do one more core 
core strengthening pose, um, movement. So this one, the hands come, hands come uh, shoulder height. So making like a T shape with your body, backs on the floor. Lifting legs up towards the ceiling, straightening the knees, and then windshield wipering the, the legs right and left. Okay, when you're ready, just bring them back to center. You could keep your legs straight or bend them, your choice, and then lower the legs down to the, to the floor. And rest. Feel free, by the way, to stay resting if you need to. Okay, when you're ready, you can peel your back up once more. And we're gonna make our way to standing. And uh, if you're, you're close to a wall, move towards the wall. We'll do a forward fold with the aid of the wall. So for this one, we um, take hold of the elbows and lift them up overhead. Just lift them up overhead, pressing the elbows up towards the ceiling, turning to face the wall, and then bending forward, letting your arms hang, and walking your feet forward so that your head, the back of your head, touches the wall. So you can feel the wall, you can press against the wall if you need to. And slowly begin to lower your back down, coming on, maybe coming onto your shoulders, walking your shoulders down the wall, maybe bringing your feet closer if they work to get closer. And stretching out your neck and straightening your knees. Just really playing around, experimenting, exploring, using the wall to support your forward fold. Okay, let's bring the hands, release the hands down to the mat, down to the floor, walking the feet back for downward dog. Pressing your hands into the mat. And lengthening the low back. Breathe. Okay, let's lower the knees down now. Lowering the knees down and then using the elbows, to coming all the way down onto the elbows, clasping the hands. We do some preparation for um, some inversions. So this is to help strengthen the shoulders. Okay, the first one is um, to bring the head between or uh, wrap the hands around the back of the head. So we're bringing the crown of the head to the mat. It's 
So the hands come, hands come just behind the head and we're lifting the knees off of the mat, walking the feet a little closer to the elbows and hold. See if you can lift your head, the crown of your head off of the mat as you hold here. Draw your shoulders away from your ears and hold for five, four, three, two, one, lower the knees, come back up to seated. So this is kind of a mini inversion and it actually helps prepare the body for a headstand. We're not gonna do a headstand unless you want to, but these are developing. This is helpful to develop the muscle you would need to do a headstand. So let's try that again, All right? So now you have a sense of how it feels in your body. It might be, you know, you might be using, exert, exerting yourself a lot here. So uh, really listen to your body, what works for you. You could always just watch this and then try it again later. Okay, so interlacing the hands, clasping the hands, elbows down. Crown of the head comes down to the mat with the, back of, with the hands at the back of the head. Lift the knees, walk the feet in, and hold five, four, three, two, one, and let's lower the knees back down, come back to seated, rest a few seconds here. So we'll try another preparation for um, an inversion. So this is a nice preparation for what's called Pincha Mayurasana, where you bring your elbows to the ground. This time the, the hands are not clasped, the, so the forearms are on the mat, and the palms of the hands are flat on the mat. And in the same way, you kind of uh, draw the head down, but the head doesn't come down to the mat. It's hovering above the mat. We're just resting here. Maybe not resting, but engaging our shoulder muscles. And you can also walk your feet a little closer to your elbows. And hold for five keeping the head off the ground, four, engage your shoulders, lift the shoulders away from the ears, three, two, maybe straightening the knees, one, and go ahead, and lower the knees, come back up to, to seated. See how your body's feeling here. Inversions really help the heart a lot. Oftentimes when we come out of them, we feel a lot better, oftentimes. If you're getting a headache doing this, then just stop, don't do it. If you wanna try it one more time, we can try something, we can try this one more time. All right, let's try that um, prep uh, preparation for Pincha Mayurasana. So this is the palms of the hands come down to the mat, Elbows down, really engage your shoulders, kind of lifting your shoulders away from your ears, and then lifting the knees off the mat. You could stay here, or you might choose to walk your feet closer to your elbows. Now let's hold for about 10 seconds. And three, two, one. Go ahead and lower back down. We're lifting up. See how your body's feeling. This inversion. Okay. Let's um, take a rest from inversions. We'll do a, a little twist here. So bringing the both feet forward, hands at your sides elbows kind of maybe pressing your, your like straightening your elbows out and turning your shoulders out without moving your fingers. You can try that out if you like, just to lengthen up the back. We'll reach one knee up, step the foot over the leg, 
wrap, so I'm doing my right foot, my right leg, stepping my right foot over my left leg. Left hand wrap, left arm wraps around the raised knee, right arm comes behind. So twist here. Twisting starting from the hip. So the left hip comes forward, right hip comes back. This helps to stimulate the adrenal glands. Gives energy. Twists and inversions give a, can give a lot of energy to our bodies. Just breathing here. Lengthen the spine up. Really draw the, the low back in. That's how we're really stimulating those adrenal glands. Also, the kidneys are working here for us. Lift the base of the, the pelvic floor, lifting the pelvic floor up. All right, let's back to center. Step the foot back over, stretch it out. Let's bring up the left knee. Lift the spine up, holding the knee. Lift the spine up and then stepping the left foot over the right. Wrap the right elbow around the raised knee, left hand behind the back, straightening the elbow and beginning to twist from the hip. So right hip comes forward, left hip comes back. Working your way up your spine as you turn. Draw the navel in and up, lift the pelvic floor up. And back to center. All right, let's stretch out both legs. Go ahead and uh, feel free to lay down on your back to rest. And let's let's transition to deep relaxation. We've done a lot of kind of a lot of movements to the body, strengthening the core, working the back muscles, doing inversions, closing with twists. Now let's let's rest the body. You could start by squeezing the hands, making fists, squeezing the hands, the arms, the shoulders. Squeezing the legs, lifting the head, lifting the arms, lifting the legs. Hold three, two, one, and release. Rest the body from head to toe, softening everything. Wherever there is pain or illness in your physical body, send a mental signal to that area, asking it to let go, to release. Now shifting awareness to breath. What is it that helps you to appreciate the fact of breathing naturally through your nose?
one possibility, one idea could be to consider how vertebrate animals have evolved from having gills to having lungs. This movement from sea to land. Okay, and then as you're ready to begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, roll your legs and arms, you can stay longer on your back if you want, or roll to your left side perhaps. And then making your way back to seated. You can maintain a sense of uh, ease that, you know, coming out of deep relaxation, if you feel 
a sense of ease in your body. See if you can maintain it as you come to a cross-legged posture. And let's continue to focus on that breath, that fact of breathing. Bringing our sense, bringing our awareness to what it is that helps us to appreciate the very fact of breath. Perhaps considering that movement in evolution over Earth's history is part of our history. Earth, life on Earth evolving from animals with gills to animals with lungs. And that is part of our history. That's part of our DNA, that movement. And it's remembered in birth. Very significant part of life's history on Earth. And to close our class for today, palms together, dedication, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Thank you.